Hello, good evening, Tish here from Black Sheep Finance. So yesterday I banged on a lot about renovations and where you can buy stuff cheap, but obviously you need money to even fund your project to start with. So it's important to understand how much it actually costs to get into the property um, and also other ways you can fund. So I'm gonna show you a couple of cool strategies. So I'm just gonna flip this around. Uh, where are we? So, here is my box. <laughs> I've drawn some figures on here. So I'm gonna show you through these figures. These are the figures of my property, so it's um, gonna be relevant. So, um, it's important to understand, like I'm not gonna go too much into um, the terms. Um, if you're not understanding some of the terms I'm talking about, go back and watch the video I posted about the five essential lending terms. Uh, that was a couple of days ago. So. This property, well it's important to understand, so to buy this property I sold another one. When I sold that, I netted, so after all costs, fees, etc, I netted $62,500. Then I bought this property, so PP stands for purchase price, that's a three believe it or not, for $340,000. So your on cost is always stamp duty. Stamp duty is the biggest cost, it's an absolute killer. So this is the exact stamp duty amount. Um, hence the odd number, so it was 16046 Uh Conveyancer, you have to hire a conveyancer, which is um, the legal person who transfers the title into your name. They also handle all the um, transfers of money from the banks and to the vendor and that sort of stuff. So you have to have one of those. Um, Look, I, for this one, I, I allowance of 900 a lot of them will quote about 600 or a bit over, but at the end of the day, they always charge for postage, and there's lots of other hidden costs. So I always allow 900 Transfers. So when you buy a property, um, think of this as a timeline of like a, a whole year. Someone's paid council rates in advance already maybe for a quarter, and if you come in and buy the property oh my god, I can't draw it, here, you've got to repay them this portion of what they've paid in advance of their council rates, water rates, etc. So you're essentially taking over and now paying up in advance, but you've got to reimburse um, the previous owner for this. So that's what transfers is for. So depending on what you buy and when you buy, this figure can be a dollar, even upwards, you know, depending on the size property you're buying, it could be two grand. I normally allow 1500 which is always um, a safe assumption. So the total cost of this property was three hundred and fifty eight thousand four hundred I've obviously rounded and just ignored this figure here, so that's the total cost of the property. so then we need to know um okay, well, that's how much it costs. How much can I borrow so uh, I spoke about l v r which is that everything with lending is based on percentages, so borrowing ninety percent I don't like to go above ninety percent because l m i is always based on percentages. And as soon as you go above 90%, the percentage of LMI increases dramatically and it just gets horrendous. So I always try and stick at 90. Um, obviously, if you don't have any money, you have to go 95, but the LMI just almost doubles. So the loan amount, so it, you can't borrow this whole lot, right? So it's only worth 340. Now, it's important to understand that your valuation is only ever going to be the purchase price or less. They're not going to value it more, even though the property might be more, because when they were advertising it, they were advertising it for three fifty. Um, but I ended up buying it for three forty. So I can't borrow this amount. This is greater than the valuation, which would make over a hundred percent. So borrowing ninety percent, which is three hundred and six, I then need to fund the gap between the cost and the loan. So the gap here. Is fifty two thousand four hundred. Okay, so I have sixty two, which leaves me pretty much exactly with ten grand to renovate. Right. So obviously, if you put all your money into the property, which a lot of people suggest to save LMI, you've got nothing left to renovate with, um, or you've got nothing left to buy furniture. So it's not always smart to put all your money into the property, depending, of course, what LVR you're at and how much cash you've got. So in this case, I've got 10 grand cash. Now my lender's mortgage insurance on this at 90% of this loan amount was 6,503. That's an exact figure. So my total loan is the 90% plus 
plus the LMI, so I didn't have to pay this out of my pocket. I could borrow this. So this was added to the loan amount, so my total loan amount is now 312503 to be exact. Um, so now I've got 10 grand cash, right? So it's really important to now understand how to get a bit creative when you're funding um, your renovations. So um, let's flip the box and look at another strategy. So I'm just going to so you can see me. Um, so depending on, like, so cash should be reserved for bargains. So Gumtree, eBay, um, all those sort of things you need cash for. So it's really important to, like, when you're planning your budget to know exactly what is better to pay cash for. And then we're looking at doing interest-free. There's a lot of um, organizations out there where you can get stuff. Uh, so in my list, I'll flip around in a second. But flooring. So I didn't actually mention flooring at all yesterday. I'm in my finished bedroom. Where are we? So this is the flooring I've got, which I'm putting throughout the whole house. So I specifically, because like my budget's like I know if you saw my figures yesterday, I'm spending forty, but I've only got ten grand cash, right? So I can make it work because um, what I'm very good at is um, I guess leveraging money and understanding how leverage works. So I'm reserving that ten grand cash for um, like my bargains basically, and. So the flooring, I think I ended up paying um, three and a half grand for the whole flooring throughout the whole property. So I hunted specifically for someone who offered interest-free because I've got interest-free cards. So Go is one of them. Obviously, um, depending on your borrowing capacity, you might have to not have these cards when you apply for a loan. Sometimes it's better to get the cards afterwards. So interest-free, don't just go out and get one because different companies accept different cards so if you I already had a go card and the only flooring place I could find that accepted go um which I think they might have changed names it's funded by GE I think it was carpet court um some other places had like I think it was like Certigy and like 28 degrees or something like that so find a supplier first before going out and getting interest free cards so I got I didn't have to pay for my flooring up front so because I only had that 10 grand cash um, from the seller property. So I funded the flooring through Carpet Court and you could fund 100%. I also managed to still bizarrely negotiate a really good price. Normally you can't negotiate interest free, but obviously I actually spoke to the manager. He was in good mood. So I still got a good price. Um, I don't believe in paying more um, if you don't have to. So the next thing um, which you can leverage is appliances. So even though it's Nice to get appliances cheaper, and you can get them from auctions. If you're tight on cash, you can get your appliances through Harvey Norman, the good guys. Most places do interest-free. Um, so you can not have to pay cash for that. So, for example, even though I've already got my oven and range hood, I haven't got my cooktop or dishwasher yet, so I'm planning on getting them from either Harvey Norman or the good guys. And it's the same for a kitchen. So I happen to have a business account through somebody and that's where I'm getting my kitchen from. So I'm not paying cash for my kitchen or any of my cabinetry. So I'm not paying for the laundry, bench top or cabinet or the um, linen cupboard cash either. I'm doing that all through a business account, which you can't really replicate. So I won't talk about that too much. But you can get kitchens from um, a lot of suppliers and just free as well. Tiles. Now this is really interesting. I didn't know this until I actually went in, but National Tiles... They do interest free as well. You've obviously got to spend over a thousand bucks. So um, I think it was a thousand when I went there, which I wasn't going to spend. But normally, if you're tiling a, a whole property, you'll probably spend a thousand bucks anyway. So national tiles offer interest free, and um, normally you can still get good prices as well. So I'm just going to flip that round so you can see that list. If you want to take a screenshot, you can. So important to get the loan first and the property first go find your suppliers um, that you prefer still get good prices and just find out what the terms are so flooring I got 12 months interest free they wouldn't really do much more than that um, appliances well depending on what you buy and how much you spend you can get maybe three years interest free kitchen you could probably stretch out as well tiles I'm not sure what terms these guys offer but normally you can get 12 months free as well so that's 
another way to leverage. I mean, that's, you know, these are some of your major costs right here. Um, and negotiate. So, uh, my electrician, he was through um, one of my business um, arrangements because I didn't pay cash for my plumber or, or I had to pay a little bit of cash for, I think I paid 500 bucks cash and two and a half grand on a uh, business arrangement with, um, my plumber and with my electrician, he wanted to go half half, and I was just say, look, I can only give you a thousand bucks cash. Most of them, especially if you stick to the smaller guys, most people are negotiable. So just ask. If you get knocked back, then you get knocked back. But it's always worth asking. Um, what's next? So okay, this is another cool strategy to get some extra cash and leverage your position. Revalue. So when you purchase a property. The, the valuation is only ever going to be purchase price or less. However, once you already own a property and you go get a valuation, it's going to be based on the market, right? So a valuation that you get at time of purchase or any time only really lasts three months. So if you want to revalue it straight away with the same lender, they won't let you because your valuation is still current. However, if you wait three months, you can get a new valuation. So if you've only got 10 grand cash to spend, the idea is you spend it in the places where you can get instant uplift as quick as possible. So if you only get 10 grand, that's not enough to do a kitchen. But 10 grand is enough pretty much to do all the bedrooms and all the flooring, all the painting. You just might not have the money to do the kitchen and the bathroom. Yes, they add the most value, but you can still make the property look awesome for 10 grand. And then you get it revalued. So I've been... Um, Realistic here in my figures, I mean, I don't need to do this, but this is a strategy you can do. So if I got my value at 340 when I first bought it, and then I spent 10 grand on it, and maybe I got stuff interest free and did do the kitchen, then if I got it revalued and the bank revalued it at 380, I can now go back and ask for more money. So if I stick to the same ratio here and borrow 90%, 90% of the 380 is 342. 342 less my existing loan of 312 means I can get $30,000, an extra 30 grand. So I'm obviously going to pay LMI again. So you pay lenders more insurance every time you lend above 80%. It's not technically a once off, it's every time you lend above 80%. But because I've already paid it up to the 312 amount, the six grand I paid before, they take this into consideration. So all you have to pay an extra. 1,342 to get this 30 grand. And again, you can borrow this on top. So essentially you're borrowing an extra 31 and a half because um, I might charge a fee to do it and you're getting 30 grand and you can pretty much finish your renovations. I'm not doing this strategy because I managed to get to um, use other methods to pay for everything. But that's a really, really easy way. If you haven't got cash now, um, Try and get as much value and make it as pretty as you can and um, get it revalued. Um, if the, so that's if you stay with your current lender. If your current lender doesn't give you a good valuation, you can shop around and go to different lenders. You don't have to put an application in to get a valuation. You do need a broker to get one though, so you can't order a valuation for free through a bank. Um, but I can help you out with that if you want to get other valuations done. And the other thing you can do is if you're looking at doing an extension on the property, so obviously that's structural and you can get a quote. So um, you can't just submit a quote for like 40 grand and then the bank will give you the 40 grand. If you're submitting it as like a, a to be built kind of thing, so you're going to put a full extension at the back, you get a builder in to do it. So say for example, you've got a $500,000 property then I'll put a hundred grand extension on, um, they will take that into consideration as well. So they will, if you get a, like a building contract for that hundred grand, they will value that contract and your existing property. So do your property up a little bit with whatever cash you've got. You kind of need at least 10 grand to do something to a property. Well, not really. Depends what you are, um, what you're doing. But get a little bit of uplift, spend some cash, paint, do flooring, do some basic stuff. Um, so if you're going to do an extension, then see a builder get a contract, then get it revalued. So then you can normally borrow against that contract price. So there's heaps of strategies um, you can do. Obviously, that's what I help my clients with is if you are renovating or 
um, looking to build or do anything, then I help you with your game plan, basically, and do all the numbers and help you map that out. So hopefully that's been helpful and uh, you can figure out what you need um, to buy property. Got any questions, post them below. And uh, have an awesome night. Thanks, guys.